James Webb Telescope finally proves Stephen Hawking's multiverse theory. Hi there, you're here because you saw the multiverse of madness, or because you were always a sucker for space science. In either case, welcome. You were at the right place, it doesn't matter who you are. If you've got an internet connection and a social media presence, you've probably heard of the James Webb Space Telescope. If you go back in time, where will you want to go? Back to your childhood? Or maybe to a remarkable event in the past, like the beginning of the human race or the wipe out of the dinosaurs? The last one might not be the best option though. While physicists are fairly certain that time traveling to the past is not possible, you can definitely look into the past, and here's how. Light takes time to travel. Light from the sun takes 8 minutes to reach the Earth, so when we look at the sun, we're actually looking at what the sun was like 8 minutes ago. Light from greater distances, say billions and billions of miles away, would take a considerable time to reach us. And thus, when we look at such faraway objects, we are looking at their past. This fact makes telescopes sort of like time machines. And as telescopes go, the James Webb Space Telescope is perhaps the best machine in existence. The James Webb has the potential to see everything in space in time from the beginning of the universe up till the modern universe. After 30 years of manufacturing, 50 successful deployments into space, months of calibration and a distance of 1 million miles from the Earth, the JWST has produced its first set of full-color images. Images so powerful they have reduced grown men to tears. Whether I am one of them, I will neither confirm nor deny. Wherever the James Webb looks, it discovers new wonders. One of the main scientific aims of JWST is to answer the critical scientific issue of when the first stars originated, shortly after the Big Bang, and how they generated the basic elements of the earliest galaxies. JWST might be even able to observe population 3 stars. Stars that emerged from primordial debris from the Big Bang, that have not been seen previously by accessing the light wavelengths from the very first stars and galaxies. The Telescope which was put into operation on Christmas Day 2021 and is currently 1.5 million kilometers from Earth, has already discovered the most distant and early galaxies known. This galaxy dubbed Glass Z13 is so distant, we observe it as it was a mere 300 million years after the Big Bang. SMACS 0723 is a cluster of galaxies photographed by the Hubble's successor telescope, so heavy that it causes light from a distant object behind it to bend around it allowing space scientists to study them. From birthing stars to secrets and nebulae, these are only the first of James Webb's discoveries that are reshaping space science at a startling rate. Stephen Hawking is one of the vastest legacies in the astronomical fraternity. It makes sense that the JWST spends considerable hours gathering evidence on the latest physicist theories. One recent discovery has finally proven Stephen Hawking's last and perhaps the most mind-boggling of all his theories. The multiverse theory. Even more harrowing than the concept of alien life somewhere in the universe is the idea that there may exist infinite copies of our universe containing infinite copies of the Earth with an infinite copies of you living in infinite parallel versions of your life. This theory is premised on string theory and suggests the universe is limited and much simpler than many research hypotheses about the Big Bang claim. It was sent for publication before Hawking's passing earlier in 2018. Recent studies of the Big Bang indicate that our local universe was created with a short burst of inflation. In other words, the universe expanded exponentially for a small period of time, following the Big Bang. But it is generally accepted that in certain places, once inflation starts, it never ends. In some areas of the cosmos, inflation may continue forever due to quantum phenomena, making inflation universally eternal. The observable portion of our cosmos would then consist of a small, habitable area where stars and galaxies developed after inflation stopped. In their paper, Hawking and Hertog say this account of eternal inflation as a theory of the Big Bang is wrong. The problem with the usual account of eternal inflation is that it assumes an existing background universe that evolves according to Einstein's theory of general relativity and treats the quantum effects as small fluctuations around this, said Hertog. However, the dynamics of eternal inflation wipes out the separation between classical and quantum physics. As a consequence, Einstein's theory breaks down in eternal inflation. The theory of eternal inflation that Hawking and Hertog put forward is based on string theory, which attempts to unite general relativity and quantum physics in part by describing the fundamental constituents of the universe as tiny vibrating strings. Some could contend that although the concept resolved one issue, it also generated an unlimited number of new ones. 
As scientists examined the theory, it became clear that it implied that the Big Bang should produce an infinite number of universes rather than just one. For the hartle hawking theory, some might be quite similar to our own, possibly having planets, cultures, and even people that are like those found in our universe. Other universes might be slightly different, maybe with worlds like Earth where the extinction of the dinosaurs never happened. And there could be realms radically different from our own, maybe to what of Earth's, stars and galaxies as well as other physics. Although it seems unlikely, the mathematics in this theory potentially allows for such events. But if there is a multi-universe, how do we find it? Some argue that the multi-universe is independent of our universe and thus inaccessible. Others state that we simply have not designed the right tests yet, which could prove the hypothesis. These are observable phenomena in our universe that support the idea of the multiverse, but there is nothing substantial beyond theory that could prove it. We may never know if our world is one of many. However, the universe is not constrained by the limitations of our understanding. Just because we don't know something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. 80% of our universe is composed of dark matter. However, this dark matter does not interact with light in any way and thus is difficult to understand. Recently, in 1970, Stephen Hawking suggested that this matter might be composed of black holes formed in moments following the Big Bang. These are also known as primordial black holes. Today, astronomers have proposed a hypothesis that explains not only the existence of dark matter and that of the biggest black holes in our universe. Scientists have observed that there isn't enough simple matter in our universe to balance out the dark matter. So what does the James Webb have to do with this seemingly science fiction concept? In recent work, researchers at the European Space Agency delved deeply into the hypothesis of primordial black holes, examine how it may explain dark matter, and perhaps address other cosmological issues to pass the present observational tests. Black holes in the early universe must fall within a certain mass range. In their latest study, the researchers built a model of the universe that replaced all of the dark matter with these relatively light black holes, assuming that the primordial black holes had a mass of about 1.4 times that of the sun. They then searched for observational hints that could confirm or disprove the model. The scientists discovered that primordial black holes may have had a significant impact on the formation of the universe by seeding the earliest stars, galaxies, and supermassive black holes. Stars, galaxies, and supermassive black holes are observed to arise incredibly swiftly in the course of cosmic history, possibly too quickly to be explained by the process of creation and expansion that we are now watching in the universe. All supermassive black holes, including the one at the core of the Milky Way, may have their origins in primordial black holes, assuming such objects exist. The explanation for dark matter is straightforward and does not need for a vast array of brand new particles. This concept has just been a model thus far but it might be tested relatively soon. The latest generation of gravitational wave detectors, especially the laser interferometer space antenna, is poised to reveal a great deal more about black holes, including primordial ones if they exist, thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, which was specifically created to provide responses to queries about the beginnings of stars and galaxies. Together, the two facilities should provide scientists with sufficient data to reconstruct the history of the earliest stars and maybe beginnings of dark matter which might ultimately serve to demonstrate the existence of the multiverse. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. We'll be back with another one very soon.